Okay, hi again. Um, I'm Scott. I'm still Max. Yeah, and this is our big 64 tournament of things we like at Walt Disney World. And again, we're just expressing our personal opinions. Um, if you're just joining us, um, we created a 64 type chart similar to March Madness. We put a bunch of names of attractions at Disney World into a hat and randomly, I swear, pulled them out <laughs> uh, to create matchups. And we are gradually winning our way down to figure out what our collective two favorite attractions at Disney ultimately favorite is. Um, last week, or last show, whenever you saw it, we did the top half of our first bracket. So we're doing the bottom half of that. Hopefully there'll be a way that you'll be able to see this bracket, you know, additionally to seeing this video. I got it. Um, so, <laughs> so should we go through all the matches that we have in this round, or should we just launch into each each pair? Let's let's just go through real quick, and then we'll launch into right. them. So, so I've got uh, the uh, Mark Twain Riverboat uh, versus the Tower of Terror. Uh, Top to be above versus Peter Pan. Ellen's Energy Adventure versus Tom Star Island. Impressions to France versus Reflections of China. That's one that we picked randomly. That happened. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Enchanted Tales with Belle versus Splash Mountain. The Astro Orbiter versus the Electrical Water Pageant. Uh, uh, Frozen Ever After is that the full yeah, name of it? Versus Grand Fiesta Tour. Um, and Primeval World versus Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes. And you have... And I have, first of all, one of the most upsetting matchups possible. It just happened this way. So get ready, angry fans. I have first Space Mountain versus Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Then I have Kilimanjaro Safaris. Again, we didn't do this on purpose. Versus the Jungle Cruise. We have Ooh. Mad Tea Party versus Great Moments in History with the Muppets. Winnie the Pooh versus Journey of the Little Mermaid. To be specific, this is the motion ride and not the show. Um, I have Buzz Lightyear, uh, the Astro Blasters versus O Canada. I have the Carousel of Progress versus the current version of Journey into Imagination. The Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse takes on Star Tours. And Stitch's Great Escape versus the Tomorrowland Speedway. So I think I have some very entertaining stuff on my card. Yeah, you, you're the winner I got here. Some good stuff. On All right. Well, let's let's start off. Uh, Actually, yeah. let's start off with you. You want to start with the best me? ones? All right. Well, I got. I jump right into it here, and we talk Space Mountain versus Thunder Mountain. Okay. This is gonna be interesting. Now I have said I don't do covered coasters. Closure, and, dark coasters. And, and, and I do the Space Mountain thing, so we have that difference there. Um, but we both love Big Thunder Mountain, don't we? Yes, we do. It's we do. Wells, right? No, Wilderness. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fun theming. Uh, it's, you know, the queue has gotten better recently. Um, you know, I, it, I, I enjoy going on it multiple times per trip. I always make it a point to try to do so. It's one of the first things that I look for a fast pass for. Um, I feel like Thunder Mountain manages somehow to thrill everyone and upset no one at the same time. Like yeah. If you're, a, if you're a real coaster fan, you take this in stride because you appreciate how smooth the ride is, the scenery you're looking at, you know, and if you're somebody who doesn't usually do roller coasters, you're willing to be like, well, this is an exception that I can do. So, I it, it pains me because, honestly, and I know you're no fan of Space Mountain, I guess my feeling about this is, it's sad that Space Mountain drew the slot that it did, because just out of respect for what an iconic thing it is, you'd think it would get to survive to go a lot deeper into the tournament somehow. And it just drew a very, very un unexpected opponent here. If this had been like Space Mountain versus, say, Stitch's Great Escape or something. <laughs> um, Even I would have to give it to uh, Space Mountain. <laughs> You mean you'd rather be hurtled through the dark than burped at in the face? All right, well, we'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, right, so. I guess I, I have to say I, I'm going to agree with you and just go with Big Thunder on this one and see what happens next. Okay, so then we've got good old uh, Liberty Square Riverboat versus the Tower of Terror. <laughs> now, here, this is territory that you don't step into. I have, Tower though. Of terror. And again, I said in the last video, I have a policy, a personal policy. Says, I will go on every attraction at the major Florida theme parks at least once. 
Hey, you know, it's decision time, and Webster defines Maelstrom as a powerful, often violent whirlpool, sucking in objects within a given radius. To ride or not to ride? That is the question. I have the answer. No, I'm not riding. You ride. Good luck, guys. Here we go. Uh -huh. um, so you're saying that uh, the uh, we're at the riverboat versus uh, Tower of Terror. Yeah, and I'm thinking Grandma and everybody like it, it's about the conveyance. We talked about this when we were talking about the railroad. I'm on a boat is like the actual thing that you're enjoying. Now there's scenery. You're gonna and there's a little spiel of Mark Twain talking. Yeah, a couple things. Um, you know, you're, you're on, on it. Fire. You're on the actual thing. Well, if it's working. Sometimes. You're on the actual thing a little bit longer, um, but uh, I don't know. You you said yourself there is stronger theming. There's all the stuff. There's it's a lot of attraction. I mean, the riverboat is <laughs> <laughs> the riverboat is more fun to be on the ground watching it go by with other people on it than to be the one on it. Be like, look, there's the river. I didn't think I was gonna break you on this one. Oh no, I'm 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 fine with that one. I kind of feel that way. Okay. I am really interested in what happens here when we have the Kilimanjaro Safaris versus the Jungle Cruise. This is your full disclosure moment, I imagine. Full disclosure, I have worked Disney Point at Kilimanjaro Safaris. Um, so I, I don't know how I, I don't know how that if it might be like pride in the job or it might be okay. I know the ins and outs of this from behind the scenes. This magic is ruined. I, I've I, always loved Kilimanjaro Safaris. Um, I, uh, I I really have, and I think you guys it really cute. becomes. It's, it's they both have variety, okay? Yes. You get a variety Mechanical of animals. animals. Well, well, I'm talking about it's a variety of. You know the, the what's going on with the animals and what sights you see there versus what jokes you hear. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you do have a longer ride on Kilimanjaro Safari. It's about twice as long, sometimes three times as long, depending on how things an are going. If an ostrich decides to stand in the road. Uh, no, I just there are other factors I won't get into. Yeah. Um, uh, you do have you know the Jungle Cruise being more iconic. Um, and I think, I think it, it depends on what kind of person you are as to which one you pick. Whether you get more out of reality or fantasy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I am going to vote Jungle Cruise here, I think. But my reasoning is this. Although you're right that there's a degree of variation with the jokes that you might encounter and whether your skipper is any good. But I know I'm going to see the sights that I'm going to see. And I like the sights that I'm going to see. Whereas Kilimanjaro Safari is the very nature of it. I might not see anything. Well, I'll see something. But, you know, I might have a very minimalist experience. The heights yeah. are very high. Yes. And the lows you know, are very I feel like, low. Wow, there's a giraffe and he's like in my face. Yes. You know, but, the, the lows can be very low, I'll tell you that much. When you're talking about that, that, that termite anthill thing, you know, termites. Yes. Whatever that thing is, that, that there are multiple termite thing. hills. And then we talk. They're about not made of stone. Well, okay, uh, but anyway, <laughs> sometimes that thing is a big piece of conversation because no animal has appeared for a while, and we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about the table rock formation, and then we're going to talk about how bad poachers are for a while. And, then, and, and I, I, my heart goes because that must be something that's like you guys are there doing it, going, oh, come on, I'll give me a bongo, give me something. Uh, it's not as frustrating as, as all that. It's sort of like, well, too bad. <laughs> At least that was my attitude. I mean, no, just I, because I, what are you going to do? Yeah, not yeah. because I don't care. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I don't I, control I, the animals. I, I kind of feel like between the, 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 the Disney legacy of it and the history of it, taking nothing away from, on the other hand, I think if you went to Animal Kingdom and it consisted of getting in line for Kilimanjaro Safaris, let's say in a world where that was an hour or an hour and a half long, and there were no other attractions. I'd still go to that. I'd be like, that's great. It's an animal preserve. It's a whole different thing from anything else at Disney. And I still think in this scenario, it's a painful vote for me. But I, I, And maybe you feel the exact opposite, but I kind of feel like the Jungle Cruise by a whisker, by like the narrowest of, of votes. So it's Kilimanjaro Safaris is the winner. <laughs> Ah, uh, 
man, it's so hard. I mean, I've got so much personal bias, and just the uh, yeah, fact that there are. Yeah, and I want to see the ride that you worked on not be out of the first. Place. I know. It's just like the, you know, the fact that there are real endangered animals and so many of them actually being preserved there. I mean, yeah. it is in its own way an actual wildlife preserve. People don't realize that they're like, oh, these poor trapped animals. Like, no, it's like. They're all endangered or rescued. In its own bizarre way, this ride successfully does what the tram studio tour wanted to do years back. Would it help if I told you that Walt originally wanted live animals on the Jungle Cruise? I knew that. And yes. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? I, I don't mind if Safari survives this. I mean, we just knocked Space Mountain out in the first round, so Jungle Cruise can go right behind it. I mean, it's tough for me. It's just... Real living animals, man. Yeah, they're. The, you I mean, might get to see baby elephants. The safari has each other. such a tough road to hoe because it's going to manage to battle its way through Jungle Cruise and then come up against Big Thunder. Uh, so oh, yes. I don't even know there. So uh, so all right, we'll go with safaris. Then. All right, I think that's fair. Besides, we don't want a completely Magic Kingdom centric uh, result here. You know. Um, all right. All right. Where are you next? It's tough to be a bug versus Peter Pan. So do you want to go instantly onto something that's okay? <laughs> or do you, or want, you want to wait, wait three hours? Three hours to six minutes of entertainment. <laughs> Not six minutes, that's generous. <laughs> Peter, Peter Pan's flight, for those of you who try to beat the lines at Walt Disney World, is the perfect storm. It's like ground zero right behind the castle. Like, oh, I just got to Disney World, I walked through the castle. I didn't, I didn't want to get on Phil Magic. Ah, I'm going to go to that. Secondly, it's an iconic character in a slow loading ride that only... That's, that, I think, is the time. biggest issue. Yeah. Is that it's an iconic thing that everyone wants to go on, both because the ride and the film it represents, but also that the loading... It, it's the same loading uh, capacity as they had in 1955. Yeah. And they can only load people so fast, and it's and not that many. And that said, it is so precious. It's the Wrigley Field of Walt Disney attractions. It's like, we don't want to touch this because it's small and historically significant, and we like it, and it's quaint. And it does what it needs to do so ingeniously with so little modern technology. It's all about scale. Which, by the way, I don't know if you've seen, but they've totally redone the Disneyland one. Have they? Well, sort of, kind of, totally. Hmm. Yeah. The, so the giant computer images of Captain Hook come out and grab you? Or well, like, for instance, like, the whole, like, the shadow of them going by the moon is just the moon turning around with a painting of the shadow. Now they have, like, projections and stuff. Oi! <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. um... But they have updated the queue. The queue in itself is almost like an attraction now. now. Yes, it is. With now, very cool effects. Okay, so it's tough to be bug. Mm -hmm. I feel has this thing going where it's one of the few rides where the physical sensations that it causes the people in the audience can be a polarizing experience. <laughs> you know, not everyone wants their butt stung by by virtual bugs in the benches. You just lean forward a little bit and you can't feel it. You know that. You know that. I know that. <laughs> Joe just got off of uh, the plane and came here for the first time because I'll see this bug thing. Wow, what's going on? There's stink in my face. There's water. There's things in my butt. What's happening to me? You know, so I, I feel like it's got some traumatizing potential for a film that, okay, when's the last time you, audience member out there, have said to yourself, I'm gonna rewatch a film. Am I gonna rewatch Peter Pan? Am I gonna rewatch A Bug's Life? Quick! <laughs> You've not seen a bug. Some of you out there are like, oh, I've seen it. It's the one with the bugs. <laughs> I get confused with the answer. Yeah, but wait, wait. Okay, let's let's not attack the source material. All right, here. but we're, I mean, we're going right to the attraction. I feel Peter Pan's flight, despite its loading issues. It, it, presuming you can get on it, and we're trying to rate the experience of being on it, I would vote for that. I I, I guess I have to give it to that. I, I do have a decent amount of love for It's Tough to Be a Bug. At the same time, we just went to Disney and didn't go on It's Tough to Be a Bug, even though there was no <laughs> way. Because I wanted to get to, where are we going, Magic Kingdom? Yeah, <laughs> so. Probably going to Epcot to eat, but anyway. <laughs> no, we, went, uh, we, we were going to eat. We went to Ohana. <laughs> yeah, take that's that, a whole people. separate video. Yeah, 
No, 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 what is it? Family? No one gets left behind? Yeah. No, no steak was left behind. Oh, no. <laughs> um, okay, Mad Tea Party versus the great moments in history with the Muppets, which is a very new thing. Very new. Um, uh, it's a very old thing. Well, I've got a huge love for the Muppets, and I gotta say, I was in awe seeing, like, life-size, like, actual Muppets. Yes, and it's a nice thing now that the Hall of Presidents is offline and there's nothing there, it fills a gap there. As opposed to the teacups, where I haven't actually been on in years, because I feel like you get everything you want to get out of the teacups by walking by the teacups. Yes, there it is, there's what you will see, there's it's the music. An it's also an attraction that's at every carnival and state fair in America. Yes. It's something like it. Clearly not as clean or as fancy, but basically that bit where the objective is to become dizzy. And we have another attraction where the objective is to become extremely dizzy. We'll get to it in a minute, but yeah, I can't vote for it. I, I, I think the Muppets are going to to win the day on that one if you don't disagree. We want to make yeah. sure we get to everything here, so Great Moments continues. All right. This one is interesting. Ellen's Energy Adventure versus Tom Sawyer Island. <laughs> wow, it's a battle of two. Riveting and exciting experiences now, at Disney World. I have a vote, despite the fact that I don't really go on dinosaur because I don't like being yelled at stuff, I love the dinosaur section of Ellen's Energy Adventure and I will tolerate the rest of it most times you're, if the people with me are willing to, <laughs> to go on. You're tolerating a lot. To, to it is that. 45 minutes, about five minutes of that is the dinosaurs. You know, if they could sell a ticket that was like, Ellen. Dinosaurs only. That would have a queue. There'd be people getting fast passes for that. Because that's what they want. They don't want a dated film about Ellen with a very Which young Which isn't Andy nearly Curtis. as bad as the original version. Oh, no, no. No, the original. Oh, God. The search for coal and blah, blah, and that voice. I that tried re-watching that just for nostalgia's sake. I couldn't make it through it whatsoever. I didn't get far into it at all. It's painful. Well, I can't believe I did that as a kid and didn't start screaming and tearing my hair out. Because it keeps promising you dinosaurs, and it keeps telling you, you're riding on sunshine with the, the uh, solar-powered vehicle. That this but then you see the dinosaurs, and you're still there. And then it's like, are the dinosaurs coming back? And they're positioned in such a way that it's like, film. Another film. Dinosaurs! <laughs> you know, and it's like there's no pizzazz to the ending. There's a weird moment. I don't know if you've done it recently. I was not on the trip that we took together, but the one I took before that. And there's a strange section where Chris Berman of ESPN is announcing oh. the extinction of the dinosaurs like it's a sporting event. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that happens. <laughs> Bill Nye. Um, <laughs> Um, so this is, yeah, uh, this this is a problematic then, thing. Because Tom Sawyer Island, it's walking around an island. There's there, trees. There used to be a little restaurant there. There, There isn't. I guess seasonally there is Is the now. paintbrush thing still true? Why? Can you like, oh, I found Tom's paintbrush and I took it back to a cast member and I got a prize or something. Some, somebody's stage am I? I've never heard of that. It okay. might fall into the category of, we used to do that, but then we stopped having fun. Well, Tom Sawyer's Island is from an era where I think they were like, little kids just want to run around. They don't need animatronics. They don't need scenery. They just need a place to climb things. The Barrel Bridge is kind of fun. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm working. Right. here. I'm working. I feel like there would be so many more people on it if it was just like, if there was, if the barrel bridge like extended to like the haunted mansion queue, and you could just be like, <laughs> "Here's a fun shortcut to a Big Thunder Mountain." Wee! You know, <laughs> the worst thing about the random selection of these things, by the way, folks, is just picture this, okay? The Jungle Cruise and Space Mountain are going to be languishing behind as eliminated, but one of these two attractions <laughs> is going to move into the next round. Um, I'm going to painfully vote for Ellen here. I, I gotta go with you too. I mean, I've At been on it more times there. than Tom Sawyer's I, Island. Dude, Tom Sawyer's Island it could be something. Could yeah. we get like? Would it be great if there was like a face character who like was Tom Sawyer? Or there Island? used to be. I know Disneyland. We don't do that anymore. <laughs> no, it's just kind of. The, you can go over to Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground, and I feel I have the exact experience that you have at Tom Sawyer Island. I went on a boat. There were some trees, 
there was some western stuff around there was a big wagon wheel i ate a sandwich yeah but at uh fort wilderness you can see horses that's true and you got a pulled pork sandwich all kinds of things right? yeah. uh, okay so next what do i have i have winnie the pooh which what I, there's an official name for the Winnie the Pooh ride beyond just what maybe it is. Is it the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh? Or I think else? so. I think it is. Many uh, the versus Pooh. Journey of the Little Mermaid. Uh, which I think is right actually the called Under the Sea. It is called Under the Sea. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're right across the street from each other. You know. Um, well, Little Mermaid is a little bit more technologically advanced. Uh, however. Uh, I love Winnie the Pooh and don't have a lot of love for Little Mermaid. I knew this was going to be a source <laughs> material discussion here, folks. I kind of, I, I kind of. Well, it kind of yeah. has to be because it's just go through the both film. of those rides. Both are of them just are like, just that. We will show you scenes with these characters. How many times does a little kid go on either of those rides? And I'm talking a tiny, tiny tot so that they point to some representation of a character and speak that person's name out loud, and their parents are just overwhelmed with. How cute that is! That's what the ride is. Look, it's Ariel. It's Pooh. That's it. Now, in defense of one of the Pooh, there is the cool astral projection yes, effect. I there really... is the bouncing effect. And so, those of you who don't know, my favorite joke is to talk about how there's a moment in Winnie the Pooh where he appears to be working like Marvel Comics Doctor Strange, where he has projected his astral self out of his body kind of does some tumble salts and then moves directly into the very Mr. Toad-like world of heffalumps and woozles. You also get a much more complete sto like telling of the story in Winnie the Pooh, whereas The Little Mermaid has an interesting abridged version where it's, I want to go up to the yeah. surface, I'm Ursula, I will give you that power, okay, then, I'm kissing Prince Eric, and then, Curses! You no, foiled me! If anything, it looks very ungrateful. It kind of looks like Ariel is like, I want the chance to have legs, and Ursula is like, okay, you have legs, and then they kill her. And no, they don't! They, they just don't. You she, see her in the background, right, going, in the background ah! like, ah! But no kiss the girl. How, oh, oh, there, there is there kiss the girl! Is, but, but it's just so... I don't know. You're right, though. It's just kind That's of... That's it. It's just... Okay, I will give you legs. You cool. Know is, kiss I'm gonna kiss this dude. I was mixed up. For the record, "Kiss the Girl" is cut from the uh, show over at Studios, uh, the Little Mermaid stage show, which strangely doesn't have that. Another story. I'm gonna. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll, I'll go with Winnie the Pooh based upon that. Um, <laughs> things will get interesting in the next in the next round on this card. I'll tell yeah. you that. Um, All right. So. <laughs> Impressions de France versus Reflections of China. <laughs> now, preliminarily, before we get to the nitty gritty, you have uh, seated uh, circle vision, semi circle yeah, vision. They let you sit down in France. Yeah, seated semi circle vision, standing total uh, circle vision. Uh, yes. Um, now, I quite enjoy Impressions de France. <laughs> And Scott quite enjoys Reflection, uh, Reflections of China. Of China. Yes. So what we're going to do is it's fight China. each other yes. with blunt instruments. That's why people tune into these YouTube videos <laughs> to see horrible things happen. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Basically, the fact that they let you sit down in France should be a plus. But It is a beautiful theater. It is a beautiful theater, but it is a theater. And in the fact of the matter is, this is an attraction that is basically a film. To me. It is like... As is Reflections of China. Yes, but Reflections of China at least has circle vision. So there's something about the film that yeah, I yeah, like you can only you can only see so much circle vision at once. I mean, you know. If, yeah, but if I choose, although you know what, the secret of circle vision, they don't. They want you looking in a circle. Right? Oh yeah, if you look at one, like if you look at like uh, where no one else is looking, it's 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 just like oh that's a hill. Like it's like what's just behind us. But anyhow, yeah. <laughs> I also feel I am far more personally likely. In fact, this has been the case. I have been to France. I have not been to China. I am more likely this. This is my shot to see some of the sites that they're going to show me in Reflections of China. I think that the building itself is themed, you know, very iconically. That that beautiful temple. Um, I think the China Pavilion is one of the ones that I've caught all the World Showcase, Showcase Pavilions to a degree do this, where if you go deep enough into the pavilion, take a slight turn and look around yourself, you are almost surrounded on all sides with the country that you are supposed to be in. 
and I, I I feel like Impressions de France is kind of tucked in the back of the of the thing as an afterthought, and that there are cast members going, come on in, come see the movie, and see. They do the same thing in China. It's, well, hey, it's, it's a front that you no know one goes to. No, uh, it's, t it's tucked exactly as far back. Uh, I will go with the tape measure <laughs> next time. Well, I, <laughs> They're I, both in the back of the I'm pavilion. Like navigating past the wine shop. No, okay, <laughs> listen. Picture the pavilion, okay? Yep. China, like... Sort of like over to the right, you've got the entrance, and then past it to the back, you've got the gift shop and the restaurant. France, sort of over to the right, you have the imp uh, the, the entrance for Impressions of France, and then to the left, you further okay. back, you have a restaurant See, and a gift shop. And I picture it's it, the same thing. Or if I'm walking <laughs> down the boulevard of World Showcase, like I'm in the main thoroughfare, and I look to my, usually depending on where I'm coming from, my right, my left, whatever, and I see I can see the round building that is the Temple of Heaven, and then I see the other kind of buildings that are set back low. When I see Epcot France, I see, I think it's Chefs de France is in the front there, and there's a fountain, and there's sort of an alleyway with an ice cream place that used to be much more ethnically cool than it's now an ice cream place, and the cinema. But it's just a different. fountain. That's all. The only I mean, difference is there's a fountain. You, <laughs> I will grant you that playing the game of finding either of these attractions <laughs> is not as challenging as the how do I get into old Canada game? Yes, which is but, well, mystery. they were doing some private. Yeah, but even still, there. it's always like kind of. Mm, it's kind of back here behind the restaurant. I feel that you get much more of an experience, even though it's not total circle vision. For Impressions of France, it's a, more of an overview, whereas China, it's like, hey, China's a place. Oh, it's got some on, things yeah. in it. It's got things, though, that you probably, <laughs> the average person has not seen. I would wager that more people visiting Epcot have been to France, and I'm not saying that more have been, you know, than have been to the parts of China. But some of what's in that film, in Reflections of China, I believe, is some of the first time that someone was allowed to film some of that, if I'm not mistaken. And again, I'm not speaking as a great story here. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to my guns. Impressions to fronts, the, the camera is right on a flower cart. You see them unloading it. You start off on a nice little boat at dawn, and you're traveling down the boat. You see a wedding happening out in the countryside. You see if you're Bastille awake. Day balloons everywhere. Oh, if, you're, if you're awake, you see all those things. If you're not, and you're here because it's hot, or you're... Like letting your kid take a pass. Same thing in different functions of China. But China, you're standing up and you're on these railings because, you know, it's... I, I, so I, your I, whole thing is you just fall asleep easier. In, in Impressions to France, yes. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, Impressions to France is more exciting than uh, the uh, Circle of Life. Film. Okay, tell me, bring me through the things that happen in... <laughs> reflections of China. Why? First, we will meet this Chinese poet and philosopher. Whose name is? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to try. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, uh, we will talk about how some consider this one city, uh, that, that Venice is, is comparable to this city, that this city is like the Venice of China, but in fact, Venice is the this of the West. Um, and they talk about the city of canals. They have a lot about the Great Wall. They have this entire... A lot about the Great Wall. <laughs> yes, of course they do. Um, there's, there's a section of the Forbidden City. Um, there's a section um, about uh, uh, the Chinese opera. Um, yeah, I remember what's in... Oh, yeah, no, no, I know. Tell, tell me the rest. I don't need to tell the rest. No, you, you do. It doesn't stay, you know, but if you asked me to tell you what was in Impressions to France, I'd be like... Uh, there's a section where it divides into three parts and we see different cakes and eclairs. That's uh, fun! There's a castle. Yeah! I remember a castle. Um, there's some smiling faces of random people who were probably now like 40, who were like <laughs> 10 when the film was made. Um, it hasn't changed. Reflection of China has been updated uh, since its original incarnation. <laughs> Impressions of France is the same old IDF that it's been since A2 with the Buddy Baker arranged score. Um, 
A I'm, classic composer. I'm, I'm sticking to my guns. I've, I've, I've got to tell you, I've, I've given up a lot of ground here, and this is a small price that I've had. There's just so much more to besides the the stuff which you just admitted. Not all of Circle Vision is worth it. There's just so even much this, more that happens in this Impressions film, of Rides. If this film were flat, I would still rather watch it. And I do. You can. You could go on YouTube today, and there are POV videos of both Impressions of France and Reflections of China. It, it takes you from morning to night. It actually goes chronologically throughout the day. It tells a story you of get a the of different. That, China. You get a little of that. What have you, you get got, a little? What have you got against China? I have against it that it's not as full of a cinematic experience I as Impressions to Front. Impressions to Front is a better... I have seen it recently. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen it very recently, and it is not as good For as For those of you film. out there who thought that the longest discussion would be Thunder Mountain and Space Mountain, and that was resolved in a matter of minutes, the Battle of the International Films of Epcot. <laughs> um, I, I, I have been... Nope, I, I, I've, I've been kind of willing to roll over on a lot of things in this in this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I've decided to stake my claim here and to put my sword in the ground and say, China. I do you have a coin? I'm uh, down to a coin toss? Look, I you're not gonna win me over. I am certain that the film in France is more entertaining. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, Ronald Reagan. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we argued about Impressions de France versus Reflections of China so much that we killed the battery. I think so. I think the, the, the camera overheated. Max was going to get up and get a coin because apparently this... I would not want to be on a jury with you <laughs> because we'd be here for weeks. Um, and I basically was saying, when Max got up to get the coin, I was like saying, Hey, people, you know, vote. we're taking this to the people. And I think I'm right. I believe that Reflections of China is the answer. Uh, so... This is what we get, we get a coin toss. I, I, okay, I, you want to do this a little bit more uh, to chance? Uh, if it Here's what I'm going to do. That, that Reflections of China be clearly Here's, superior. Do you have your phone on you? I do not. Okay, I'm going to grab my phone. And while Max grabs his phone, I'll take this opportunity to remind you that Reflections of China is a film you don't see every day. That's a throwback the old Monsanto-sponsored America the Beautiful Circle Vision stuff like at Disneyland, and that it's got really great views of China. Shut up! You don't see it every day. China! Okay. <laughs> of all the... the... <laughs> okay. Okay. Here's what I'm gonna... I missed a call when we were doing this. Yeah, it was probably um... a call from, from some representative of China who was telling you, um, I overheard through some source, that you were making this film and making a drastic mistake. Okay. Putting that snoozy film about France uh, up there with, uh, with, with Circle Vision. I am going to Google Impressions de France and Reflections of China. And whichever one has more results, thus being more discussed throughout the entirety of the world, is the winner. That's a very interesting decision. Okay. I hope we so. don't have to come to this very often because this is a rare case where I have really decided to be, to be, uh, uh, active here and, and, and to resist just going rolling over here. And I don't see the number of results no on the mobile either version. of these things. So okay, let's... I'm going to get my laptop. Well, this <laughs> might continue for a while. Um, <laughs> I can kind of add the fact while we're here that the winner of this send-off is going to wind up in the next round paired off against Ellen's Energy Adventure. So somebody here is getting a really unfair route considering, again, that attractions like Space Mountain and the Jungle Cruise that knocked out right away, but this, this stuff is going to roll on. Um, okay. I, I really, yeah. you know, and just because lots of people are talking about it doesn't mean it's better. Lots of people talk about Carrot Top, the comedian. Does that make him better? I think not. Uh, impressions to France, any answers here? Okay, so it's 378,000 results. Okay. Okay, 378. I want to add that the actual population of China is bigger, and so therefore there might actually be more people uh, Googling the reflections of China. We don't know this for a fact, but... <sighs> reflections of China, 397. 
Okay. China, China. Okay. So, Reflections of China will move on to its exciting realm of battle against Ellen's energy adventure, which should be a riveting discussion in one of our future videos. Um, we better get through the rest of these quick. Well, yeah, now <laughs> we've got another whole card to deal with here. And you know what? My next card is Buzz Lightyear taking on the other Circle Vision 360, Old Canada. Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, well, I, for the record, <laughs> Buzz Lightyear is Max's one of Max's favorite attractions. And we won't get into the great scores that he is, the heights of numbers that he's achieved on it. I can go get my perfect score button if you want. <laughs> the almost perfect score. Um, the um, I, I have always felt that the Buzz Lightyear attraction always looked a little two-dimensional and temporary to me and has been kind of, eh, it's okay. And I was glad to see Midway Mania as a more fully realized representation of what the Toy Story film was about. And that's a separate thing. But, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to give you this one. I'm, I, you know, O Canada, I think, is probably better than Reflections of France and um, China put together. I think O Canada is funny and entertaining and scenic, and you have a shot of actually having been to the things that it is showing you. Uh, well, that makes it worse, in my opinion, it. but I won't get into that. You know, Martin, Martin Short's pretty funny in it, I guess, and entertaining and stuff. But, and also, like I said, O Canada seems to be tucked in this little niche spot of the Canada Pavilion without a real clear, for me anyway, I'm like, do I go around and through the restaurant? Do I go? You gotta go through Niagara Falls, man. I guess so. All right, well, anyway, I'll give you Buzz Lightyear on this one. It's not my personal favorite, but I know how much you like it, and I do think it's a more popular and a more realized attraction, and having the the victory of China, the China victory. But if, if they were side by side, yeah, same amount of weight, which one would Oh, Canada and Buzz Lightyear? Yeah. No weight. You'd, you'd be surprised. Would I? I probably so... would go to Oh, Canada. Well, then you're just caving into me because we just argued for well, forever. Well, you know, this could turn into <laughs> 64 videos of okay. this. So I think, and, and I think one Circle Vision 360 experience going into the second round is Okay, enough. so now I, I'm moving on to my next card here. Enchanted Tales of Bell versus Splash Mountain. <laughs> Would I rather be embarrassed into walking around in a circle holding a cardboard cutout with giant children or dropped, plunged multiple stories and soaked to the skin. Um, now, again, we should say that you don't do the splash uh, mountain. And when I dragged you on once, I thought I ended our friendship because you were so cranky. It was a pretty uncomfortable situation. <laughs> um, and I might add that we had the added fun of being stuck uh, literally at the moment before the plunge <laughs> where we sat there and listened to those two vultures in the top hats cackle at us for a good two minutes waiting to fall the, the drop. It was the most uncomfortable thing ever. Um, but it's a bigger deal overall. It's more iconic, it's, it's got songs. Enchanted Tales with Val feels a little unfinished. It's, well, it's, it's a glorified character meet and greet. It really is, it's got some nifty, um, <laughs> Uh, I'm allergic some of the technology, to it. Yeah, some of the technology, <laughs> the, the wardrobe, and, and even Lumiere talking are kind of cool. But, yeah, Lumiere you know, is a very cool animatronic. But really, I mean, there is, there is an audience for that attraction. If you are two, and <laughs> you would like to walk around in a circle, then... This is well, I mean, it's, it, it, it is a character meet and greet. Bell is the main attraction of it. It's kind of funny because I feel like Beauty and the Beast got a real strange, like, we're going to expand Fantasyland, we're going to give you this thing, we're going to give you a restaurant, which I think we also have very different opinions about because I just think it's a little overrated. And really good cupcake. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know. I, I just feel like it could have, for such a popular film, I'm amazed there wasn't a more solid, like, a ride or something more. But anyway, Splash Mountain. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> now we come to the discussion in which the Carousel of Progress is paired off against Journey into Imagination in its current incarnation. Is there a worse attraction than Journey into Imagination in its current 
There's one that comes to mind, but, but really, I wonder. This might be... Not only is this a bad attraction to me, that was this, <laughs> this is the added that those were the people of China writing and calling and being like, hooray, our film is moving on. No, those angry people from France. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Well, some of those people, I agree. I don't think any of those people would necessarily think that the current imagination ride is a good ride. What a dreadful attraction. Yeah, and I... I and it's worse knowing what it once was. Yeah. I thought it was so good. And now it's so disjointed and weird and, and, and Eric Idle and... Well, Eric uh, Idle's great, but... The things that are upside down because they are glued to the ceiling are not mystifying even to the two-year-old kids that I think they are trying to market to. Like everyone knows what's going on. And the sad thing is, there's so much figment merchandise, and it's not because of the current version of that no. ride. It's because of nostalgia for it's the old version of that ride. So it. they know. They everybody they know. Like they know, they know like, what they did. This would be like if you had a nice painting, and then you decided, I'm just going to fix one little thing. And then when you tried to fix it, you messed it up. Oh, like that painting of Jesus? Yeah. Or whatever Yeah, it was. that woman who like, drew a face. Yeah. Her. Yeah, and then, then, then trying to fix it actually makes it even worse and worse and worse. Um, on the other hand, the Carousel Progress, okay. So, as we've said, I kind of like that the voiceover basically comes out at the beginning and says, it's Gene Shepard, right, from Christmas Story. Yep. You know? Whoa, love this. We're going to keep it just the way it is. Sort of. Forever. Sort of. <laughs> it's never. Our family has had a few changes over the years. I'm like, yeah, not recently. Um, <laughs> You're dead, for one thing, so have, it could have been that I, many changes. I have taken people on that attraction, and they go to the last one. Because, okay, here's the thing. In the 60s, in the 1964 World's Fair, you were probably going a couple decades back. And you were going, hmm, maybe it's, it's the 60s. And before that, things were a little bit less interesting in, like, the 40s and the 20s and the aughts, because it was four decades of time. And then it became the aughts, the 20s, the 40s, and the... What is that? What time period Well, it used to that? be the future, and then they're like, oh, well, TV's got a lot better than that, and, oh, well, video games got better than that. And it used to be the last little... Well, okay, I, yeah, they, they just, like, like, they have the voice command of, like, uh, you know, um, An oven that has the voice the, command. The, the, the voice grandma command has oven. that clunky virtual reality game. Yeah, right? which, virtual reality, like, as a helmet, it used to be like, oh, well, maybe we'll, we'll invent that. Yeah, that's a thing, and it looks and works way better than what you're seeing on Carousel it's real Progress. Funny it's now. Yeah, like, that's not what Resident Evil 7 looks like. And you know, but yet, given all of that, one, I never miss it, because I have this nostalgic love affair with it, and I go, oh, it reminds me of so many things growing up, and it's cute, and it's sweet, and it's sincere, and we know how much Walt worked on it personally. And it's a lot less sexist it. than it used to be. It used well, to be that Sarah was just dumb about everything, and now she is like... It had a period, I think, of a little bit more progressiveness, where Sarah used to complain about not getting paid the same, and how she could work different hours, and how she... And then it was all fascinating that she had a job, like that was a, a forward-marching thing. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's kind of cozy in itself. But it's going to be better. There are a lot of things that are better than Journey into Imagination. Including Carousel Project. Absolutely. <laughs> so without further ado, the carousel goes on right there. Um, we've got, I've got two more to go on my card. I suspect you probably have two more to go on yours. Yes. So, sorry. While we were arguing about France, I got an important text. Um, the Astro Orbiter versus the Electrical Water Pageant. For those of you who are admiring this shirt, which, which Max got me as a Christmas gift, um, it's not for sale at the uh, resorts. Or no, you have, to, you, have to go to the, you have to go to the theme park black market for So I guess it shows you that I might have a bias toward the notion that the single quaintest, most old-fashioned I love sitting on a beach at the Polynesian or wherever, maybe the contemporary use of the Polynesian, and turning to someone and if you look at your watch and being like, in just a minute, something cool is going to happen. And they don't know what. And then, sea creatures and the flag. Yes, the, the, the great thing about it is that it is, a, it, it seems to be a relic of the past that like, 
someone just like forgot to get rid of like how the Space Jam website was just up for like 20 yeah. plus years. I feel like this thing is like under the radar. It's sort of like do, 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 do. don't don't mind us. We're still entertaining people with our little octopus. And who doesn't still like it? You know, it's yeah. kind of cute. For the price of admission, which is nothing, you know. That's the other thing is you don't have to be in the park. You could just be visiting somebody and parked at the Polynesian and sitting there. Which is one of the best things I think is if you are if you have a non park day, if you have a day where you're on property but you don't have a park pass, one of my favorite nighttime things to do is you go to the Polynesian, you get yourself a dole whip, and they'll play you can watch the fireworks from there, they'll play the music right on the beach, and then out rolls the electrical water pageant. You get a double feature. It's night out. Right on a beach. Was yeah. That, what were we saying? It was up against something else. The yeah. Astro Orbiter. Now, the Astro Orbiter, I feel like it's one of those things where you're happy it's there. It makes for a great scenery as part of Tomorrowland. Mm -hmm. It's not nearly as much fun to go on. No, although again, very similar to Dumbo, the views that you were getting, um, the scenery of the actual experience going around is kind of fun. Um, the Astro Orbiter also has this weird thing where at the end of it, it kind of goes around in a circle, and then as it lowers, it gets faster for a minute, which yeah. is a little bit exciting. <laughs> you know, your idea of exciting is when somebody pokes grandma and she goes, oh, you gave me a start. It's that kind of exciting. Um, I think that the, the pageant is going to, to take the day on that one. Yes. Okay, here comes the, we're almost done here, folks. I hope you're, maybe you're watching this in chapters. I don't know, maybe people are like pausing it and coming back. I don't know. <laughs> After you go out and remember that there's a sky and other people in the world. No, don't believe him. <laughs> you want to know what happens when we pit the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse against Star Tours. The only attraction that could be the queue for itself. <laughs> um, by what you mean, Swiss Family Robinson Oh, yeah, Tree yes. House. Now, I know that you're kind of not a big Star Tours guy. I used to love Star Tours. I feel like the heart and soul have been ripped right out of it with the new version. Yeah. I feel like it is such a flat attraction now. I don't care that it changes. I, I feel like it is just, it, they have just gutted everything that just gave that ride substance. See, I think the fact that it changes gives you one of the few things at Disney that you can ride and re-ride and have a slightly different experience. And at a park like Studios, which has painfully few attractions altogether, it's good to have one that to me has re-ride potential with maybe a slightly different outcome. Um, I mean, I'm a big treehouse guy. I, I, I'm There's really food allowed. We, we enjoyed a nice uh, frozen treat the last time we were on it. Well, I think it's more there's food allowed because there's seldom even a cast member Because there. no one's stopping stop you. you. There's also uh, gambling you know, and really uh, Cuban cigars. It's be and... happening on the, on the treehouse at any given time. <laughs> um, the treehouse is a, a relic of a film that, don't please Disney, don't ever turn it into Tarzan's treehouse like you did in Disney. They, they won't. They've, they've gone too far at this point. It's There's too, no going back. No, you can't turn back now. It's got that clever Swiss Capulco music going. You know, and it's, it's kind of... It's nice to see a ride that you, whether you like it or not, they're like, you're going to... Now, here's the thing. Treehouse does what Tom Sawyer Island could do. It's like, hmm, there's steps, and there's crazy turns, and there's a bridge, and there's scenery. But Tom Island is too spread out for all that, and it's too peaceful and quiet. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's isolated, it's yeah. the thing. Like, yeah. am I going to take time out of my day to go over here? You know? The Treehouse is together with the Carousel Progress and the Woodway People Mover as things that when the park is so full of people you can't breathe, and you feel like, I need to go on something... You can always count on the treehouse. It's like, yes. <laughs> it's your fallback attraction. So um, I think uh, you're gonna go for that over Star Tours, though. With oh us. right, I forgot what we were debating. I don't, um, know. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a long round, man. Star Tours, the queue for Star Tours. You got three PO and R two working. I, I can't. I know. I can't argue too heavily in in favor of. Uh, uh, or against Star Tours, so I, I guess I gotta give it to Star Tours. Star Tours, Tours has to survive this I, one. I guess it does. Um, it's, it's it's a you know a non-interactive, non-moving attraction. It's yeah. a tree. It's a tree. It's Trees a tree. are great though. Um, Frozen Ever After versus Grand Fiesta Tour. Wow. Ooh. An Epcot ride that took away a ride everyone likes. 
an Epcot ride that replaced a ride that was kind of similar but is a little funnier. Yeah, I mean, people liked, I feel, El Rio del Tiempo. Yeah, I never had a problem with Rio del Tiempo. I kind of thought it was kind of, it was, it was like if, if you had wings and It's a Small World had a baby and they oh, had boy. born in Mexico, it would be that. Inside the 3rd century, Mesoamerican Pyramid is a tribute to Mexican culture and a relaxing boat tour of Mexican life and history from Mayan high priests to modern day Mexican dancers. Maelstrom, please come back. I would be more than happy to ride you anytime. I would even sit through your boring movie about Vikings at the end. It used to be kind of a challenge, you know, like you'd get off of the ride and there'd be the doors that would be open to the outside world with the sunlight coming through, and you had to like beat feet through the benches and be like, oh, 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 and not and not offend the cast mm -hmm. member from Norway who was standing there like, oh, you still have time to watch the Norway movie. Oh, go, no, bye bye, mm -hmm. get out. But um, you know, Frozen Ever After is also a little short. I mean, I know you're dealing with little kids. Could, relative to the amount of time you're going to spend in that queue, you're going to be in line for 80 minutes. Well, let's let's. Are we factoring in the queue? I, I was trying to go Sometimes. purely by the attraction. If we, well, I, I guess if we go purely by the attraction, I have, I don't know, maybe... Well, I mean, I well, not, I shouldn't say that. I'm saying the, the wait time. I just, I have more fun in Grand Fiesta Tour. I like it more, too. I, I, have, more, I have more of a tradition with it's it. It's funny. It's, it, it's, you know what, you know what, I'm going to use the sidebreaker on this, and I think it's very important. Okay. Grand Fiesta Tour is still... A celebration, you're going to see where I'm going with this, uh, of the culture of Mexico yes. as a real place. Right. Donald and his friends are going to places in Mexico and showing them to you. Right. Frozen now is a celebration of a fictional town <laughs> in a fictional story that happens to be sort of like Norway, and that's why the poor Norwegian pavilion got stuck hosting it, and All it's right. no longer about the culture. Grand Fiesta it is. All righty. All right. Si, senor. Um, why don't you do your next one? Because I think I want to save the okay. last thing I have. No, you know what? No, we'll just stick with this because you've got a pretty entertaining finish that's going to happen very swiftly. Okay. Uh, this one might take a minute. Um, my final pairing is uh, Stitch's Great Escape <laughs> versus, <laughs> versus the Tomorrowland Speedway. And I want to add that this could be Stitch's Great Escape versus almost anything. Yes, and almost anything would still win. Now, we should say that the Tomorrowland Speedway is... It's an interesting attraction in that it, there's no reason it should be fun. And yet, yeah, it is fun. It is. It's not worth waiting more than 15 minutes but for. But the baffling thing, you're like, okay, I'm driving. I drive in real life. I, I, I have more control over the vehicle. Yeah, I'm not on a metal track that stops yeah. me from going where I want. And by the way, the 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 the, the, the steering wheel seems to do nothing. No matter what happens, no, no, you your no vehicle's just going that. bang, bang, the only thing bang, about, bang. The, yes, the art of the Tomorrowland Speedway is not rear-ending the person in front of you. Either yes. out of sympathy because they're probably five, or, or respect because it's your friend. But having to or have, an, an adult stranger, right? <laughs> or a, or a scary person that might might get angry at you. So you try to kind of balance your foot on the pedal just enough to keep moving forward and not swerve too much that the cast members who are scattered around are judging you like this person can't really drive straight ahead. <laughs> and then you look behind you and in front of you to see if other adults can drive straight ahead, and some can better than others. That's kind of the fun of Tomorrowland, and yet this is more fun than Stitch's Great Escape. Yes, uh, I want to add that it would have been entertaining almost as a bonus, and I know this video is very long, so I don't want this to go on. What would have happened with Journey into Imagination versus Stitch's Great Escape? Journey into Imagination. Let's talk. At least you get to see an original Figment animatronic. Although you do get to see you original see, animatronics from you Alien a, Encounter on Stitch. Uh, you also see a Stitch animatronic. No, well, I'm not talking about the, fa the fact that there's an animatronic. I'm talking about a cool animatronic. <laughs> Alien Encounter, to me, by the way, it used to upset people, and I understand that. I loved that. I thought, great, here's something that literally, in the storyline of the attraction, a character can die. That doesn't happen too often, but that happens. Somebody gets eaten, perhaps next to you, in the dark. Now, a character eats a corn dog and burps in your face. Um, the character bounces around the room. 
there is um, a very uncomfortable chair that a large harness makes you sit in with your weapon. It's on the chopping block. It's, I, I it's, realize that. It's doomed. It is perhaps the single most unpleasant. It's not only just a bad experience, like, imagination is a bad attraction. This is an attraction to me that is like, I am worse for having been on it. <laughs> like, it actually negatively impacts my life. I, I'm going to go with the Speedway. Uh, obviously on this because I believe that almost anything is better than than Stitch's Great Escape. So finally we have one of the easiest to debate. The Primeval World Coaster uh, over at Animal Kingdom's Dino Land versus Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> okay, now now clearly, Pride in the World is the winner. I'm glad that you agree with me that being on a ride that is on a rotating axle, built to look deliberately like a cheap roller coaster, with that bad 2D visuals, with 2D visuals that also bangs you around and very it uncomfortably, literally turns you in circles as it moves you around its track, with the express purpose of making you very dizzy and and and, and nauseous. Um, exposed to the elements on a hot day with an unusually large queue that has no theme whatsoever. I, You know, it's funny. We were just talking about Stitch and we were talking about imagination. This is up there as far as just... I'm scared to go on it this because is it's physically uncomfortable. This ride is... is <laughs> I'm sorry, Disney. You know, we are probably two of the biggest shills you're ever going to meet for Disney. There are very few things, you know, mm -hmm. that I could say, again, if you were transported to Disney for five minutes, for almost any of these attractions, if a genie appeared to me and said, pick one on this list, even something we didn't vote for. I choose the food. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> but, you know, my point is that, like, any of this, Enchanted Tales with Belle, one of the, one of the circle missions, anything, somebody said to you, I, I think that Primeval World is one of the only things that they said, I will transport you to Florida for five minutes and you will go on Primeval World. I would be like, no thanks. I'm just going to stay on my couch. I have no interest in being transported anywhere near Primeval World. Um, perhaps one of the most unpleasant. And on the other hand, you have Pirates of the Caribbean. Perhaps one of everybody's outright favorite things in the world. Period. I don't even think as far as like attractions. I just think... If you ask people, do you like Pirates of the Caribbean? They say, yes. Do you like being hurtled through space in a, on a loose, rusty axle on a, some sort of a coaster? They would say no. So I just Googled Impressions to France Epcot versus Reflections of China with Epcot. I didn't add Epcot before. It's done. It's and it's done. And Impressions to France had more, which oh. means simply no, no the recounts. phrase "Reflections of China." It's over. No, we oh, need to China. coin flip this. No, I'm not coin flipping anything. China. No, Come we on. only put it on the basis. Please. I thought we were wrapping things up in a nice bow here, and we were gonna just be like heads or tails, Scott Gagnon. Heads, because a person would use their head and prefer Reflections of China. Tails. This is an outrage. No. <laughs> this is just nonsensical. I, Unless you, we, it both won the coin toss and it's more popular. Well, then we need a tiebreaker between the three things that we had. One thing where it was... No, no, no. The first thing got disqualified because it didn't include Epcot. I proved that it was simply the phrase reflections of China devoid of its... Did you take Epcot away from both of them and try that? Yes, that was my China initial Epcot. thing. So, reflections of China, Epcot, impression of France, Epcot, that's what you get. You get How it. does that bear... People might not necessarily tack the word Epcot on... Okay, tiebreaker. Should I put in Disney World? I you could. Okay, I'm going to put in... This is going to... So... We agree. This is going to be I the final tiebreaker. So. This is. I, I. I only hope that it meets a fate down the road. And as we wrap up this video, we're going to talk about our next round. So twenty six thousand four hundred for impressions to France. Okay, twenty six. And I don't really hate impressions to France. I want that to be known. I mean, it's boring, but it's not. It's no reflections of China. What did I say? I don't remember. I was too busy 
26,400. Reflections of China and Disney World has 279,000. It wins. It wins? Yeah, do your math, man! I know you're an English professor, but All right, come on. Well, then it wins. <laughs> okay, so China rocks China down. keeps it its continues. place. It continues. Don't okay. worry, it's going to So let's go through this really quick. So quiet. here's what we're going to have in the next round. Next round, we've got uh, Tower of Terror versus Peter Pan. We've got Ellen's Energy Adventure versus Reflections of China. We have Splash Mountain versus the Electric Water Pageant. Okay, water and water. we have the Grand Fiesta Tour versus Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, I like how you didn't even bother to write the word. Pirates. <laughs> so obvious. Well, in mine, I have Big Thunder Mountain uh, versus Kilimanjaro Safaris. We have uh, Great Moments in History with the Muppets versus Winnie the Pooh. We have Buzz Lightyear uh, versus the Carousel of Progress. Get ready for another long debate right there. And Star Tours versus the Tomorrowland Speedway. So, those together with some stuff that we moved into the next round above. We'll deal with a bunch of things in the next video, I guess, and hopefully there will be peace in the valley until then. If you're still watching and you're not outraged, please send us comments or whatever, especially if you have, especially pro-China comments. Thank you. Viva France! Come with me on a voyage through my Impressions de France. From the cold green north, they come to see the elegance of Chambord. Steel Day. Nothing makes us prouder than to celebrate the birth of our republic. Paris, the living symbol of every age across the face of my beloved France.